Hello and welcome back. Sean here, Mountains Garage. The day after Christmas 2022. I hope you had a wonderful holiday, whether it be in person with your family or your loved ones, or even just reminiscing in your mind. I hope at some point in your life there's a happy moment there. I have wonderful uh, childhood memories of Christmas, thanks to your know, loving parents, and it wasn't until I became an adult I came to learn that sometimes the holidays aren't happy for everybody. So I hope at some point in your life it has been. But here it is, almost nine o'clock at night. I was out here earlier in the day, and actually back before the snowstorm the other day, I dragged in another engine stand. Again, I have more engine stands than any sane person needs. The criteria for picking this beautiful, <laughs> I believe it's an old Harbor Freight one, uh, is because the head is level. In fact, if I put my finger and take the slop out of the head, she's dead nuts level. And I'm going to drill, well, the nut on the tube so I can tighten up a bolt to take any you know, slop this way out of it. I don't want to deal with that. There's a pin in there, but that could get all, you know, wobbly, so I'll make it so I can lock it down like I do my uh, transmission holders. So I've started the adapter piece. I don't know whether it's going to point this way or that way. I don't know where the exact size and weight of the rig, but I think it's going to probably go this way. I've seen them both ways where other people have converted engine stands, so. That's a work in progress. Earlier, I did make this tray that's going to allow my hydraulic pump to sit right here, which showed up the other day. And I've assembled it and tested it. It works good. So I measured one inch larger than the rough footprint of the hydraulic pump. Went and got a piece of sheet metal. It's 60 thousandths. I forget what gauge that is. Probably 18. I'll look it up. And I drew it out with a Sharpie, used a stomp shear to cut the size. Again, I gave myself one inch here and one inch for a lip, so two inches bigger than the actual pump. And then I mocked out and using my kitter nacho, which I've shown you before, but it has a cutting uh, foot that goes up and down like this. So there's seven or eight inches each way, so you can cut anything you want, but it's made to cut a notch which is exactly what I did in each corner. So I nipped the corner out of each one, which is really cool to have the tool to do that. And was able to, I have a cheap metal brake, tractor supply, it's all I've ever had. I used to have access to a really nice, you know, box and pan brake with fingers that you can remove, which is what, exactly what I needed. I bent the long sides and then for the short sides, I could only start the bend. I had to finish them with a hammer on the bench. It's just a tray. I painted it flat black. It'll be fine, but someday I'll have an actual finger style brake that I can remove. Now my buddy has one just down the street. He says I can use it anytime I want. I called him up and he was busy. <laughs> so um, someday he'll be talking him out of that and I'll bring that one home. That's a nice one. So it'll do 16 gauge, the one he has. So I am not a self tapping screw guy. This would have been an okay application for him but I drilled and tapped. In this case, I was going through two layers of metal, the bracket that holds this one on and this piece, and then this was just into the tube. But I just drilled and tapped a quarter inch and the hydraulic pump has rubber feet, so the height of the bolts won't be a concern. And you know, it's all about the details. And we're back. I gotta tell you, this thing was 61 pounds in its shipping container, empty. It holds, well, almost three gallons of hydraulic fluid. She's kind of heavy. They give you a handle, which is helpful. And I don't believe there's any chance of it jumping out of its little tray. So that's good. They give you the hose, which should be just about right. The cylinder is going to be over here somewhere. I hope it doesn't drag on the ground, but we'll take contingencies. I put the same male fitting on that I have There'll be a female fitting on the hydraulic ram. Same one I use in my punch and everything else. So that'll work well. They give you this really nice looking anyway, 3 8 toes. This thing operates up to 10,000 PSI. Has a cool gauge, nice and big. 
But it's kind of funny. For, from a flow perspective, the tiny fitting that goes into this block right here is only eighth, eighth pipe. <laughs> so the fitting itself inside is about the size of a pencil, but I've tested it on the uh, metal brake. It works perfect. So it's nice and quiet, relatively, for a hydraulic pump. And I spent the extra $50 like I explained before, it's, it's, it plugs into your wall. It's 110, 15, 20, wherever you're out in the country. Let's call it 115 or 110, whatever you want to call it. Household current, household plug. I paid the extra $50 to have a solenoid return instead of a handle where this green uh, magnet is, cartridge valve. So I can just step on a foot pedal and it goes either direction. So. I mean, you can run it with your hand if you wanted to, but I'll be stepping on it with my foot in and out. I didn't want to, as, as I look at it now, the handle would have been just under the bender, so might not have been that big a deal, but when I was shopping and using my imagination, I thought this was a better deal. The beauty of a handle, now, if you get the one with a handle, you still have a foot control to send the fluid out. You just don't return with a foot pedal. You have to use a valve over here. So, in this particular style pump, which is on eBay, and it was just over $300. And it's going to be my choice. I won't have to... I'll try it with the S cylinder because I have the same... Stay. I have the same fitting on it, so I could interchange. I can use this on the other tools. I didn't need this, but I wanted it. So, here we sit. But she is quite a monster. But it arrived in one piece. The box did not. <laughs> the box pretty much just gave up when it got here, but it made it. So the bender itself, I have tracking information on it. It left California last Wednesday, but according to UPS, it hasn't left California. It's been picked up, two boxes, 100 pounds, and there's been no update. But it's supposed to be here Thursday, so we'll see how that goes. I just hope it arrives, hope it's in a good sturdy box and hope it arrives in one piece. That's all you can hope for. I joked when I was ordering this and I was comparing whoever imports this to, you know, an American company, how you'd be better off, you can call them up and everything, but I have to give the whole, whoever, I don't, I can't even pronounce the name of the email I get, but they've asked me three times. One, make sure it arrived okay. Two, if I have tested it, and I replied that I briefly tested it, and I think it's fine. And then the third email to remind me that it has a pretty substantial warranty. I don't remember if it was one or three years. I'll have to look that up. But again, the, the box expired. I don't know how I would even return it without having to make a new box. But And yeah, whatever. But I thought it was kind of interesting that I was joking about never getting any customer support from you just take your chances when you buy junk like this and in this case they seem to be trying so whoever they are I can tell you that the factory that assembles this the people putting the Teflon tape on the fittings don't understand that you have to go the opposite direction of the, how the fitting is going to thread into a hole because every hole that has Teflon is falling off because they wrapped it the wrong way <laughs> You know, <laughs> quality control. When I had this hooked in the metal brake, doing some bending, it didn't even register on the gauge while it was bending the metal until the point where the ram of the metal brake bottomed out, and then I could see the gauge rise. So, And it definitely was faster than the air pump. So it would be interesting to see if it you know, makes the bender smooth or not. But again, it's all speculation at this point. But uh, only time will tell. Well, I spent more time making the video than I planned on. Big surprise. So I guess I'll call it a night and finish up the stand before Thursday. Earlier, I was messing around with this dropped cross member. I had to, I mocked up a cardboard tube in the calf in the 55 Chevy for the simulate the drive shaft and ran some string along the lowest points of the chassis because the 
Rear end is currently at ride height. It has solid bars where the rear coil over shocks would be, so it makes it handy for setup. You have to remember that the rear end has to come down a long ways to get the tires out of the wheel wells. So, and I didn't want this to hang below the lowest point of the chassis. I don't want to create a low point. So it's gonna work out, I believe. I'm still getting used to cutting with the M18 Milwaukee metal saw, but it's all about how you hold it straight. I didn't grind this, I didn't do anything to it. And uh, this was my first cut and it's not quite straight, but I still have to notch it, so. This one, the day I did it, when I made this one, I didn't put enough drop in it for one thing. I was just practicing with the other style bender. And then goofing around notching, I made it too small, but it was a perfect candidate to let me know that that's not enough. And this is, I bought this as a much longer piece. And the pieces I cut off will actually be handy. I'm gonna use them just behind that on either side of the drive shaft inside the rear part of the chassis. So that's enough rambling for tonight. Uh, kind of an odd video, but they're not all home runs, I guess. <laughs> I hope you got something out of it. And once again, I'll catch you in a couple days.